Hey everyone, this is Bremster and this is number 96 in the Sudoku problem series. This is a magic square problem submitted by Frappi. Um, and the goal on this one is to place all of the digits into the highlighted square. Um, now, the rules on this one, apart from the normal Sudoku rules, is that the cage, which is the highlighted square, can contain no repeated digits, and each row, column, and long diagonal in that um, in that highlight or in that cage must contain uh, the sum of each of those must can be the same. So the sum of each row, column, and long diagonal will be the same sum. So that's the way, uh, that's what you need to do in this one. Um, this is a, uh, that's the definition of a magic square where each of the rows, columns and long diagonals have the same sum. Um, what I'm going to, there's a link below to where you can do it. I'm going to wait for a few seconds and then, um, so you can pause the video, give it a try, and then I'll be back to explain how this one works. Okay, so I'm going to try and explain how this one works because the magic square is a concept in Sudoku that a lot of people just learn rather than so they know the, the fundamental tricks of a magic square. So people who've done magic squares before will probably be able to solve this one very, very quickly. Um, but again, um, and I was able to, when I test solved this one, solve this only, in only a few seconds. The trick, however, is understanding the logic of why the magic square works the way it does. So um, one of the things is... Um, what are the sums going to be? Now, all of these will contain different digits. So what we know is that um, each, um, if these will contain all of the digits one from one to nine. If you add all of the digits from one to nine, you get 45. But there are three rows. I could do the same with the column. So each of those three rows must have the same total. So 45 divided by three is 15. So we know that the rows are going to sum to 15. So we know that the total that we're working towards. So the next question we can try and ask ourselves is, how are we going to make that up? Now, one important thing, and I'm going to use some lines to do this. If we draw the lines that pass through the middle of the box, like this, what we can see here is we've got a total of 15. These cells, these three cells some to, um, are going to give us 15. These three cells are going to give us 15. These three cells are going to give us 15. These three cells are going to give us 15. So what we've got here is a sum of 60 because we've got four times 15. And every cell is counted once except the middle cell, which is counted four times. So what we've got is 60 but this central cell has to be counted four times. So the difference between 45, which is the sum of the entire square, and 60, which is the sum of those four lines, is the difference between one times this cell and four times this cell, which is 15. So this cell needs to be the different, the three types, three times that cell, I'm explaining this badly, I'm trying my best, three times that cell, is the difference between um, 45 and 60. So halve, which is 15, 15 divided by three, this cell becomes a five. And that's because this four, um, that cell needs to contribute four times to make the difference, or it's three extra times because it's passing through four times. So you get it once by default, but the extra three times has to make the difference. So you get a five in the middle. Now, this is when you see people solving magic squares, they will immediately just put a five in the middle because that's just something we're taught. The next trick we're taught, and I'm going to try and explain this, um, but I'll explain what I'm aiming for first so you can get it, is that the digits in the corner are going to be even and the digits in the uh, orthogonally adjacent to the five are going to be odd. Now, a lot of people will just type those in. I did. The question is, why? So let's have a look at what we know. We know that this, 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 and this sum to 15, but what we've got is the fact that because we've got five, we know that these all sum to 10. But because they sum to 10, which is an even digit, you can only do that with either two odd digits or two even digits. So these are either both odd, these are both odd, these are both odd, these are both odd, or even. Now, the question happens is, if this is rotational, we could spin this on an axis. So what happens if these are odd? And more specifically, what happens if we put try and put one 
in one of the corners. If we try and put one in one of the corners, the other side in order to make the 15 becomes nine. Now that's all good so far, but does that actually work? Because now we need to make 14 in each of those to complete the one, because one, these need to be 14. But out of the Sudoku digits, the only way you can do that is with nine, five, or eight, six. Now I can put an eight, six in, but nine and five are already gone. I can't use seven, seven. So I can never get a 14. So if I go one, five, nine down here, I can never get the 14s I need because I need two of them. It just doesn't work. So you can never put one in a corner. So we know that one nine is going to have to be in one of these. And it's the same if I do it the other way around. If I put one here, this is nine and I can't complete the other 14s. So now the question becomes three and seven. Why does three and seven have to go with the one nine? Well, let's try and put a three here. I'm ignoring these other digits. I'm explaining the rules of the magic square. Let's put a three here and let's just try and complete this row. If this is three and one, this cell would have to make the 15. This is four, this would have to be an 11, not a Sudoku digit. If this was three and nine, these would sum to 12, and this would have to be three, which doesn't work. So if this was, we know that one nine has to be here now, and I can't put three in any of the corners, because if I do, I eliminate one nines from those, but we know that the one nine has to be opposite each other to complete the 15 in the row. So what we end up with is we end up with one nine here, and the three seven, because of the one nine cannot go in the corners. So these become one nine and three seven. The seven here eliminates the three seven. Um, and because it's one nine three seven, these immediately become two, four, six, eight. I should do that first. So what we end up with with any magic square is we end up with five in the middle, the odd digits um, orthogonally adjacent to the five and the even digits diagonal. Now we know that we can't put three seven here because these have to sum to 10. Um, which is 3, 7, and the 7 is looking at it. So those are not 3, 7. Um, we also, these are not 1, 9. This is the 3, 7. This 3 makes this the 7 and this the 3. We can't put 2 up here. Um, so what we end up with now, and I'm trying to remember because I practiced the t explaining the magic square, but uh, yeah, uh, we can't put eight on this side because if we put eight on this side, we'd end up with eight, seven, and then the next one would have to be zero. So eight comes out of those. Um, I'm trying to remember. Um, so what we end up with here is four, five would, uh, four and five would be nine and would have to go with six. Six and five would have to go with four. So we end up with four, six. So these have to add to 10 as well. So these are four, six, which means this is eight. Eight and five, this is the two. Two and seven is nine. So this goes with the six, which makes this the four. Two and four is six, which needs to go with the nine. And the no this leaves the one. And that is the solution to the problem. Should have restarted the timer before I did it. That is the way you can do it from first principles. Um, it is a understanding the way magic squares work um, is uh, was basically the point of this. So you could try and wrap your head around it. Um, and that's why I tried to explain it from first principles. The thing that you need to remember if you come across magic squares and you're trying to solve a lot of them is you basically put a five in the middle of any magic square where the digits cannot repeat. And if you get a Sudoku where the digits can't repeat, <laughs> the explanation on that one is way trickier um, and I don't understand it. But um, anything where the digits can't repeat, so if a magic square is a whole box, then you can put a five in the middle. It will be the odd digits orthogonally adjacent and the even digits diagonally adjacent. And that's what you will end up with. Um, there is a whole, I believe it is still the case where if um, this, for example, if this was a magic square, um, um, but there was no rule stating the digits couldn't repeat, then I believe it is still the case that you have to aim for 15. But I have seen some a, a lot of complex mathematics around that, and I've yet to see anyone provide me with a proof of it. Um, a lot of people just assume, oh, if there's a magic square, it's going to be one of these in a grid somewhere. It's going to be one of these. Um, and I... Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'd love to see someone prove that. It's not going to be me. I, I just don't understand the complexities because when you can repeat some digits and everything gets messy, like these digits, you know, theoretically could all be five or whatever. I don't know. It, it's possible that you could just run out from um, other stuff, but uh, that is a much more complex proof. And most people who are setting with magic squares who off the, offset them just assume. And uh, yeah, that's always a bit tricky.
Anyway, this was the magic square problem, a really tricky one to solve, even though for most people this is going to be medium. I'm going to flag this as a hard because proving the magic square is always tricky, um, but I think most people will solve this in only a few seconds. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series and as always, good luck with your solving.